Hello to all attendees of Kurokon Volume 2. Thank you very much for having me. My name is Jay Agonoy and I come to you from the Philippines, one of the countries in Southeast Asia. And I am going to share what I know and what I've experienced here on our side of the world. So the panel that we're going to discuss today is case studies on YouTube-based anime distribution model in Southeast Asia. Now, what we'll be discussing here on this panel discussion, on this presentation, is the introduction of the YouTube-based legal anime streaming model in Southeast Asia and the viewer sentiments regarding this model being implemented by two distributors and how can this be applied to other countries as well. Right, so let's get started with the background. August 15th, Kiss Anime is gone for good. You know, this, this is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, anime streaming sites right on the internet. Serving lots of anime fans, of course, this is an illegal anime stream. And as of August 15, early in the morning in our time, 7.15 in the morning, Kiss Anime support over at Discord said that our beta servers have been taken down and eventually they said that all files are taken down by copyright owners. Kiss Manga and Kiss Anime will be closed forever. Kiss Anime's shutdown has happened coinciding with the enactment of the law that will bring stricter copyright laws in Japan. Part of it will be implemented this October and soon enough, by January 2021, Japan's copyright laws is set to be stricter. While the Kiss Anime shutdown did happen, coinciding with these enactments, Kiss Anime's moderators over at the subreddit said that no, Kiss Anime's shutdown did not have anything to do with Japan's upcoming copyright law. Anime fans who have been flocking to Kiss Anime are now puzzled where to watch their latest series or what to watch. Now, even if Kiss Anime said that they are shutting down for good, there are still clone sites. Clone sites who are still there to serve the people who are missing the habit of watching anime through Kiss Anime. Now, the challenge is how to drive them off from going to these clone sites having their information stolen, so on and so forth. How to put them in a space where they can watch legal anime and how to put them in a habit of watching anime through legal means. This presentation aims to show how YouTube can actually help anime fans from keeping away from piracy. How can the YouTube model help in decreasing patrons of anime piracy. Let's move forward. In Southeast Asia, there are two YouTube channels who are catering to anime fans. One is Muse Asia, which started uploading content in English subtitles around June 2019 and is one of the leading anime distributors in Southeast Asia in terms of YouTube. Next, we have Anyone from Media Link in Hong Kong who has uploaded videos since December 2019. First, they catered to the Chinese-speaking audience and now they are slowly catering to the English-speaking audience, starting with No Game, No Life in English subtitles. Now back to Muse Asia. Muse Asia has around 1.3 million subscribers as of September 10, 2020, and they have the following titles. So that's Diary of Artists at the Breakwater, Lapis Relights, That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime, A Sister's All You Need, Monster Girl Doctor, The Rio's Work is Never Done, and they also have Bofuri. And in Singapore, they are top three in the top 250 YouTube channels as per Social Blade Singapore. Now we go to Anyone, which has around 677,000 subscribers. They have the following titles, including Astra Lost in Space, A Place Further Than the Universe, Sakura Wars the Animation, the recent one, and Hinakonot. In Hong Kong, they are number 36 in the top 250 of Social Blade's top YouTubers. 
Now, if we pet anyone in Muse Asia's YouTube model versus other platforms available in the Southeast Asian region, well, let's go to brand A. Brand A has its anime streaming on its own platform for free, but it's only available for Singapore residents only. Brand C is the worldwide name in anime streaming, but they do have limited titles per region. In the Philippines, I only saw one title uh, available uh, so far, so that's out of the question. Brand I, which started its roots in the Southeast Asian region, has anime streaming on its own platform, but then again, it's limited titles as of this moment. Brand N has the widest lineup of anime titles, but it needs a subscription. This is good, but we're going to talk about the audience, which has no ability yet to, or little ability, to spend money and subscribe to platforms and they, they only have uh, cash of a, they can only afford buying prepaid data subscriptions. So that's that's the uh, basics and that's that's the available platforms in the Southeast Asian region. And now we go to an independent survey that I have conducted and I will go to my future self to explain all of this. Hey guys, okay, it's future me, or should I say present me, and I'm here to share the results of the survey that we've done. So we've done this survey from September 11 to 22 within Southeast Asian countries conducted online. We received 191 responses, and majority of them are 18 to 25 years old, residents of the Philippines, and male. So here's the details of the demographics. Notice that aside from the Philippines, there's also respondents from Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, Singapore, and Thailand. Uh, there are three choices in the uh, gender side, male, female, and prefer not to say. This was supposed to be male, female, and other gender until someone wrote that they are classified as an attack helicopter in which it will invalidate the survey if I hadn't spotted that. So uh, we change it from male, female, or prefer not to say. Although let's uh, welcome the uh, one respondent who said that uh, they are classified as non-binary. Okay, age range 18 to 25, 58.6%. So that's more than six, uh, around 60% or so. 26 above, 34.6%. Uh, 12 to 17 years old, 68 point, uh, 6.8% rather, 6.8%. These are the questions that I've asked. So one, where do they watch anime and are they following, uh, are they following services available in their country? Have they watched anime on the following YouTube channels? That's Muse Asia and Anyone. What is their impression of legal anime streaming on YouTube? How satisfied are uh, them watching legal anime on youtube and will they support legal anime streaming through the youtube platform now let's go back to that one slide where i showed you brands a brands c i n and let's give a more detailed context on that anime plus asia is brand a again i said that uh, anime streaming its advantage is anime streaming on its own platform but it's available only for uh, residents in Singapore or uh, within Singapore, I've checked the site again if I can watch on demand uh, their titles, but unfortunately, still a no. Although I've been to Anime Festival Asia 2018 and I've tried watching Anime and Anime Plus, it's available there. So that's how I can say it. Brand C is Crunchyroll. It's a worldwide name in anime streaming, but it's more catered to uh, sites within the Western Hemisphere, like right now, <laughs> uh, US and Canada. And in Southeast Asia, Crunchyroll has limited titles per region. So, uh, for example, I can watch episodes of Darling in the Franks, but I... If I want uh, simulcast, I'll have to look for somewhere else because there's only around one to 
simulcast titles on Crunchyroll that is accessible in the Philippines. iFlix, its advantage is that it's one of the pioneering video on demand uh, websites, video on demand services. They have anime streaming on its own platform. This is in partnership uh, with AniPlus Asia uh, on their first try. And then I believe it's uh, uh, they're still in touch with AniPlus Asia for anime content. But the challenge here is that also they have limited titles on their platform. So uh, the last time I watched on iFlix is they, they, they have new game. And they also have Made in Abyss. Netflix is the worldwide uh, leader in streaming, and they have a widest uh, they have the widest lineup of anime titles. But the challenge here is that you need to have a subscription to access the library. Although they're trying to sort this out by providing uh, mobile only plans for around five hundred pesos a month, but then again, uh, who will be shelling? Or is it 500 pesos? Let me double check that. I know. Uh, but then again, Netflix uh, is trying to cater to the local audiences uh, with a lower income margins. So I'll check the mobile plan and I hope I can uh, clarify it. All right, let's see the plans. They have the 149 per month, so it's good for mobile viewing for ATP. But if you want to, like, say, watch it on a better quality, you can get the basic 369 pesos a month. Uh, that's around that's around seven dollars, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, uh, Netflix does cater to. A spectrum of audiences, although as anime fans don't have the means of paying for subscription, monthly subscriptions, they will go to other places where they can watch anime without shedding, uh, without costing money. So let's go on to the first question Where do people, where do the respondents? watch anime 78 percent watch anime on youtube news asia anyone 47.1 percent watch anime on netflix brand n that's netflix 26.7 percent watch anime on other legal streaming sites including iflix and crunchyroll that's brands i and c and 67.5 percent still watch anime on illegal streaming sites but let's take a look back at the numbers while 67.5% still watch anime on these illegal streaming sites, 78% of them said that they watch anime on YouTube. So that's already a plus for the YouTube platform. It's already the, uh, it's 15 years old. So there's, there's more to come with the YouTube platform. And having anime distributed legally on the YouTube platform is something. It's... A big development so yeah we move on to the next question are the following services available in their country so 92.7 percent of respondents said that news asia and anyone on youtube are available can be accessed in their country while 72.3 percent of respondents said that netflix is available in their country while 53.9 percent of respondents said that other legal streaming sites are available in their country now, we go back to recap again. 92.7% of respondents said that Muse, Asia, and anyone on YouTube is available in their country. 78% of respondents who watch anime uh, watch anime on News Asia and anyone YouTube channels. So that's, uh, that's big. That's already something. Of 92.7% uh, of respondents who have said that it's available, they uh, seventy eight percent of them watch, so the uh, that's three fourths of the population that we have. But then again, three out of uh, four people who can access legal anime on YouTube watch there. Again, that's three out of four people. Now, the following question: Where have you watched anime on the following 
or have you watched anime on the following YouTube channels? 70.7% watch anime on News Asia, 53.9% watch anime on the Anyone channel. But here's the thing. One in four people have not yet watched anime on both channels. So that means if uh, they want, uh, if the distributors want to fully saturate the market, they can tap in that uh, 25% audience uh, who has not yet been informed that these channels exist. They can either do it through word of mouth or they can do it through YouTube ads or online ads or Facebook promotion. Yes, yes, they, they're already doing it. So now the next question what is your impression of legal anime streaming on youtube now this is a long uh this is a long question with longer answers <laughs> so we have to categorize it into five praise concern suggestion optimism and others so uh for this one let's go to the first category people are praising the uh this model is a better way it's provided them a better way to watch anime and they want more of it uh, so that they won't need to uh, they wouldn't need to resort to illegal means and so uh, this response here said this respondent here said that uh the respondents surprised that they upload the the episodes same day at his as it has been broadcasted in Japan and another response here is saying that streaming in YouTube is very convenient to those people who don't have Wi-Fi or enough load or data package to watch anime. In the Philippines, to give you context, there are some mobile data plans that gives an allotment for YouTube. For example, one gigabyte. Uh, that's already enough uh, for like, how should you say it? For anime series for anime episodes on a mobile uh, resolution around 480p um, if i'm not mistaken the one important thing that i want everyone to focus it here is that uh, people who are giving praise to this uh, model feels safe from viruses because it's the youtube platform youtube doesn't serve uh, malicious uh ads malicious adware malware or sexual ads the next category we have of course uh, we have praises and we have concerns there's positive and negative reactions to this some uh, of the respondents say that uh, their concern here in this platform is again it's been the concern of everyone who is watching anime within the region it's basically the lack of availability of titles that will make them resort back to watching anime on illegal sites again so that's one point okay and of course there's also uh terms and conditions set forth by youtube and this has been derived from uh country content laws YouTube is based in California, if I'm not mistaken. So they are under, or they, yeah, they are under the Online Prevention, uh, Online Protection and Pro, uh, Criminal Prevention Act, or COPA. Yeah, that's, that's much easier to say. And um, there's also concerns here that they're not sure if this is really profitable for the distributor to distribute anime on the YouTube platform, but uh, we'll get to that later if that's the case the next category uh, more on suggestions is of course following the concerns that there's lack of uh, available titles that can be accessed that can be viewed a few more airing titles would be nice and uh, there's also concerns about the community captions since youtube removed that ability for the community a few weeks ago so the suggestion here one of the suggestions here is that the uploader the distributor needs to provide subtitles so following that uh, hopefully they can find a good monetization model so that it can be sustainable like merchandising and such for the record muse asia and anyone already have their online stores 
uh, this already activated and even before the lockdown, even before these stay-at-home restrictions, Muse Asia, through its uh, uh, merchandise division, Hakken, has been distributing or has been an exhibitor of Anime Festival Asia. They, they sell lots of merch. They occupy big spaces. And they've, uh, of course, you can, they can do it online. So uh, nothing, no one's left out on the latest anime goods, I believe. Uh, but then again, this is more of a Singapore thing. And we move on now to the next category. People are optimistic on this distribution model. They would love to see what will happen to these distributors, Muse Asia and anyone. And uh, hopefully legal anime streaming can reduce the need for illegal sites. The Southeast Asia region is rarely seen by licensees to broadcast anime, so we need someone who can attract their attention so we can watch anime legally. The arrival of legal anime on YouTube indicates that there is still hope for the Southeast Asian region to watch anime legally, and this is important. This is the reason why we're conducting the survey. This is why we're conducting these studies, and this is why we have those case studies such as Muse Asia and anyone to show the world uh, what's uh, that uh, this this works in this region. Now, for other responses, uh, there are some funny responses here. Okay, I'll I'll read this one. I am actually not aware, but if they do exist, I might stop watching on Kiss Anime. I don't need to enlarge my thing, Kiss Anime. Just give me my anime. Anime is life, I guess. Right. Okay, next one. It's good because finally those who work in the anime industry will be compensated hopefully for the amount of tasks they do. This has been the usual concern for anime fans who are concerned of the animators. It's it's a good thing to be concerned with the people behind the scenes. And uh the people are distributors are still finding ways to to say, uh, do their thing and actually contribute to more to the animators. But then again, it's a different issue and uh, it will take us a long day to discuss more about the compensation, the right compensation for the animation industry. But I'd like to put that uh, response there. It helps people who can't afford to pay stream on streaming websites I can imagine a part of monetized videos from the anime YouTube channel goes to the creator while some part of it goes to the uploader. Or should we say the distributors, the the licensees? Uh, another one said, it's. Uh, I think it's a great benefit that people can license these episodes and stream them. If I remember correctly, they are only available for a limited time, so I think that is appropriate. It's similar to how some plays, concerts, and other stuff are available for free at a certain time. Japan has been doing this, especially during this uh, period of quarantine, uh, where events are not allowed to be held, mass gatherings are banned, and the the best thing that these distributors or these licensees or these companies entertainment companies can do is to share their stream online and i believe in one of the panels here at kurokon volume 2 there's already a discussion on uh on how to watch these online events so that's something you look forward to all right so now we move back to the breakdown of the categories. Again, since I've measured, uh, categorized these into five categories, there's more positive reaction on this platform. So many, uh, most people, majority of our respondents are saying yes to this. Now, question number five. How are you satisfied? Uh, how satisfied are you watching legal anime on YouTube? Let's get to the results. I'm, I'm basing this on the Net Promoter Score. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, how satisfied is everyone watching anime legally on YouTube? So uh, next slide we have here, okay, uh, we'll go back to the NPS. 
uh, we uh, majority of, uh, of the people, 33%, are satisfied, mostly satisfied, with watching legal anime on YouTube. So there's uh, more eights than nines. And then we go back to the net promoter score. There are uh, half of the population of the respondents said that they are very satisfied. So we'll label them as promoters. So 50.79%. Now for the final question, will you support legal anime streaming through the YouTube platform? 99.5% of respondents said that they will support legal anime streaming through the YouTube platform. And that's already uh, one thing. So I guess uh, I've since I've shared the results of the survey, and for those who have responded to the survey, thank you very much for uh, sharing your thoughts on this. And after this uh, panel discussion, before October starts, you should be receiving an email from us saying that these are the details and these are the surveys. You will get a copy of the results as promised. So with that said, I'll go back to my past me to discuss more of this. Well, thank you, Future Self, for explaining the survey that we have conducted. And I hope this gives light to the impact of this model among anime fans in the Southeast Asian region. So to cap up this presentation, based on our research, we can prove that the YouTube model works in mitigating anime piracy in the Southeast Asian region. And it's not just anyone or muse who have taken interest in this model. Other animation studios such as Tezuka Productions, Shine Animation and the like, some of them are working together with this YouTube agency called Analyze Log to make classic family-friendly anime available worldwide with this YouTube channel called Anime Log or Analog for short. Now, in the Philippines, they have not yet released content and uh, you can see on this uh, screenshot right here as of September 11 that they haven't uh, posted content available for the Philippines and uh, might as well check what's happening. Uh, basically, they said this in their community tab. They are currently only able to distribute anime within Japan but are currently working on making adjustments to distribute anime outside of the country and they will give us updates soon but hopefully not too long because of course analog is there to at least appreciate or to give appreciation to the classic anime and to bolster to improve or to elevate the appreciation of japanese animation in a nostalgic way so aside from the nostalgia i hope they do release other titles of course that's the hope of every anime fan including us in the southeast asian region who are longing for an actual anime channel that will cater to all audiences but then again it's family friendly anime i do personally think that h anime is out of the question right there then again let's not forget the youtube model of ad revenues and super chats super stickers now this goes to all of you as well virtual YouTubers who have applied and got accepted to open up Super Chats, Super Stickers, simping in another definition, in the VTuber definition, is sharing your spare cash or like uh, let's say 50 pesos. That's that quite small amount that's multiplied to like hundreds and hundreds of viewers who are able to do so. And of course, that, that amount is no joke. That amount is no joke. So the the these these distributors are already considering some of these distributors uh, i stand corrected are considering this model of course ad revenue is still there and you gotta stay for the ads don't don't skip the ads if you may this is how they pay themselves and then they pay the the rest of the industry and how this thing circulates now but of course there are still things such as the middleman problem uh, but that's for another story. Then again, then again, this is not a new thing. 
there's already channels that distribute anime in full, such as Gundam Info, the Toy Tokusatsu World, although this is a non-anime thing, but then again, you can see the nostalgia brimming up right there in the Toy Tokusatsu World official YouTube channel. Shider, Jaspion, the Metal Hero series, although it's raw, no subtitles as of now, but soon enough, they'll have their own subtitles. Toy will notice that. Toy will notice that. And of course, even on a local scale, we have this channel called Anime Club PH, which is a reborn of the then famous anime club which distributes uh, anime in uh, dub in Filipino. Now we look back at this report by the Hollywood Reporter Netflix consumption surges 115% in Southeast Asia amid virus lockdowns. This is as per a research done by Media Partners Asia and it's not just Netflix that's uh, getting more and more visits, more views, more watches, more people flocking in. All the streaming services that are available in the Southeast Asia region received a spike in visits, in views, because of all of these lockdowns, these stay-at-home restrictions. And then again, we, we look back at this report. It says here that Netflix was singled out as one of the key beneficiaries of the lockdown driven consumption spike reaching 100, uh, 115%, surging 115% once these lockdowns were introduced in the key territories surveyed, Thailand, Indonesia, Singapore, and the Philippines. And they have benefited from robust pay subs demand across its mobile plans with heavy consumption of Korean anime and Western original content. So this is pretty much, I, be I believe this is possible with the YouTube model that's uh, being implemented by these two distributors, Muse and Anyone. And I'm looking forward to a day where the this consumption like this will be will happen even on the YouTube platforms. So well uh, this is one thing. This is why we're convincing basically all of you to uh, check out on your local distributors wherever you are and just ask them if uh, they will be doing this model. If not, it's okay, but we'd really appreciate if this model works in other countries because it worked in our region. There are still many opportunities for distributors to provide legit anime sources that people can enjoy and at the same time turn them away from committing piracy. So if this model works in our region, it may work in other regions as well. It will be just a matter of time before Japan realizes this and they're slowly realizing this through the Analog Project. And I hope the Analog Project doesn't fail as much as other Japan-backed distributors. We miss Daisuke. We miss uh the other like there's this manga service called the j manga club if if you uh or j manga no uh if uh you remember i we of course the manga readers will miss that and when we say that there are many still many opportunities for anime distributors to stream their anime titles legally and to benefit from it and eventually to benefit the animators who are working hard in this dire industry, here's what Vash the Stampede says. The ticket to the future is always open. Among other places, there are models that we have yet to explore and this industry will not die that easily. No, it won't die that easily. So with that said, thank you very much for listening and watching this presentation. My name is Jay Agonoy and in the Philippines, I do blogs, I do vlogs, I do podcasts. And also in terms of VTubers, I also send super chats to them. So I know that this is a possibility. It's just people should open up to this possibility that we can also send super chats for our favorite anime characters. Well. That's for another story. You can check out the links on the slide. Again, thank you very much, Kurokon Volume 2, for having me. Bye.